Thank you for tuning in. I'm Yannick Wolf, and I hope I can help answer some of your questions when it comes to dry fasting. So before we begin today, I just want to remind everyone that if you are interested in fasting and specifically dry fasting, make sure you join the Dry Fasting Club's Discord group. It's where you'll find the expert fasters that can answer most of your questions on the fly. Dry fasting is basically the final evolution of the fasting journey. The link to the Discord will be down below. If you don't have it, you can click on it. I think it'll open up Discord and you'll be able to download it. Uh, I highly recommend joining the group. Okay, let's get started. Today, I want to talk a little bit about dry fasting and electrolytes, specifically focusing on potassium. So for those that don't know, uh, the main electrolytes are sodium, potassium, chloride, those are the three main ones. And then you've got magnesium, calcium, phosphate, and bicarbonate. So each of these uh, electrolytes could have and probably will have a episode on them. But today I'm going to focus on potassium. So one of the two key ones. We've all heard of the sodium potassium pumps that basically run your whole body. Um, and I think potassium is one of the most important electrolytes that people are just not aware of, especially when it comes to fasting. So foods that are high in potassium so that's good to just get out of the way uh, we've got beans potatoes squash think spinach broccoli avocado bananas and then we've got things like coconut water so i think everybody has heard that uh, coconut water actually has a huge amount of potassium and is just delicious i know some people don't uh, like it but i can't understand them maybe it's because uh i sweat so much and maybe a lot of well if you think about it, a lot of athletes love coconut water. Uh, maybe it has something to do with uh, sweat and losing a lot of electrolytes and potassium and your body craving it. I know my wife actually does not like coconut water and she barely sweats. So maybe there's a correlation there. Uh, it, I guess it's good to talk about uh, fasting and your electrolytes and potassium. So if you've done your research in fasting, if you're water fasting, a lot of people recently have started taking in electrolytes while they fast. So it's becoming mainstream knowledge to basically make your fast easier. So that's a great hack. And if you are water fasting, that'll basically take it to the next level, make it so easy and allow you to go even longer. Uh, but when you're dry fasting, that does not fly. Uh you can't take in water, so you can't take in electrolytes. However, there is a beautiful thing about dry fasting. So there's been a few studies, not a lot, but uh, they have monitored people on dry fasting and monitored their electrolyte levels. And it's actually amazing that your body is able to stabilize your sodium and potassium levels. So once you hit day three and four of dry fasting, your body actually starts to reabsorb them instead of losing them in your urine. Uh, you're still losing some, of course, but much less. Um, if you do look at the studies, you do lose potassium faster. And that's correlated to this hormone called aldosterone. Aldosterone is a water retaining hormone that rises the longer you fast. So when you jump off of a fast, you'll really quickly retain the water that you drink. And that's why your weight just jumps right back. So aldosterone actually helps retain sodium. So while that spikes, your body starts reabsorbing more and more sodium. But it does not help to keep potassium. That's why you're always going to be losing a little bit more potassium than sodium throughout the fast. Uh, your potassium does stabilize a little bit, so there are other hormonal changes that so far there have been no studies that have shown why, but we just know that the levels do stabilize. Uh, so just knowing that, it start, you start to realize that potassium uh, rebalancing your potassium after fast becomes like a important thing to take into consideration. So another common knowledge for breaking a fast, if you do any dry fasting research, you hear about coconut water and cucumbers. Cucumbers are a great option. They're not really the highest uh, potassium food, but all greens have a good amount of potassium. And if you're eating a 
shit ton of cucumbers after your fast, you're definitely going to be helping your potassium levels go up and they are a great rehydrating tool with lots of trace minerals. Uh, coconut water, I do not recommend right away after a fast unless you're doing an extremely short one but if you're doing anything over three days i think you really need to uh stay off of the sugary foods and even though coconut water is natural it does have quite a bit of carbs and sugars so well sugars are carbs i would stay away for at least a day or two and then get into your coconut water um a good food to uh, drink after your fast when you're rehydrating is diluted cucumber and celery juice so you get the if you're juicing you can remove the pulp and you're basically removing the fiber and you're just focusing on rehydrating with all of those electrolytes as well uh, that is a whole i have another story here so if you are juicing with fresh juice you are getting healthier water than if you are just drinking mineral water so a lot of people call mineral water dead water while your live water is actually lower in deuterium and that's a whole other conversation and something i recommend you look into so low deuterium foods much healthier than high deuterium so you're going to get uh, lots of dead water that you're drinking in your tap water has higher deuterium um Moving on to some signs of potassium deficiency. So we've basically got a few things that can kind of indicate if you're running low on potassium. Uh, an important thing to, to keep in mind, like I mentioned earlier, if you're sweating a lot, you are losing a lot more electrolytes than people that don't sweat as much. If you are running a lot, you are losing electrolytes and it may be hard to rebalance them. And lots of things can happen when you mess up your electrolytes. Uh, one of the symptoms or a few symptoms of potassium deficiency are basically constipation, fatigue, muscle weakness, general feeling of being unwell. Uh, potassium is responsible for a lot of things like stomach acid formation, which is wild. If you don't have enough potassium, you're going to have problems creating stomach acid and that's going to cause, that's your first frontier of digestion. Uh, obviously potassium is in every single nerve cell function. You've got the sodium potassium pumps, um, uh, and it's in a lot of other things. Uh, it's important to remember that 50% or more than 50% of people that are hypokalemic, which is potassium deficient, are also magnesium deficient. So magnesium, an electrolyte that deserves a whole episode about itself, is basically uh responsible for a lot of things you've got like nerve twitching that you're you, you can take magnesium to help with and lots of like mental disorders depression and everything come from magnesium deficiency so look at that uh more than 50 percent of people with a potassium deficiency have magnesium deficiency and then if you're deficient in potassium not only does it affect your magnesium or correlate um you actually have a lot of other problems. I think there's problems with calcium reabsorption. So what happens if you don't reabsorb calcium properly? One, you don't get enough calcium, but two, it can cause kidney stones. And kidney stones can cause kidney damage. And that's another thing that people are really worried about uh, when it comes to dry fasting. They worry about their kidneys. Uh, so low potassium impairs calcium reabsorption. How do you take care of the calcium reabsorption issues or kidney stones citrate was one of the easiest and simplest ways to do that and that's in lemon water so lemon water a great pre and post fast hydration so you prepare for your fast by drinking lemon water and you can break your fast with lemon water potassium just super important and a lot of information here to basically go in deeper on uh, I did want to leave this as kind of a bite size information, and I do want to do more episodes about it, and I'll go into more details. Like, uh, there's a thing called snake juice that most people who have done some research into fasting have heard about, and that's a recipe for making your own electrolyte drinks. So we'll talk about that uh, in an episode specifically dedicated to making your own electrolyte drinks.
Uh, so yeah, that's it for today. Thank you for listening. Good luck on your dry fasting journey. Make sure you join the Discord group, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye now.